Hello, in this presentation we will talk about validation of a model. In particular, we will recall how to use a train test split to estimate the generalization performance of a model. And we will also motivate the use of cross-validation for the same purpose. In this case, we will use the handwritten digits dataset that is provided by scikit-learn. And our goal will be to evaluate the generalization performance of a classifier that hopefully will be able to tell digits apart out of the collection of pixels that form each drawing. And the emphasis here in the word generalization is a reminder to distinguish memorization from the ability of a model to generalize to new data. And one way to simulate new data is by means of a train test split. This snippet of code here scheduled the syntax in scikit-learn on how to do such a split and uh, you can uh, provide the test sites explicitly for instance here the point, point 0.2 means that uh, we are using 20% of the data for testing and we can also set shuffle equals to false uh, meaning that in this case uh, it's the last 20% of the data that will be set for testing as this is a real example, you can run a logistic regression on top of this small data set and when you evaluate it, you will get an accuracy of uh, around 87%. But you could also repeat the experiment uh, by setting shuffle equal to true, meaning that a subset of 20% of the data will be chosen randomly out of the full data set. Here the random state equal to zero is just for the sake of reproductibility of uh, our results. And if you run a logistic regression in this new testing data, you will realize that you obtain a perfect 100% accuracy. But can we really trust this result or can we trust the former? Well, actually, in general, the score of a model depends on the split. And it's either because the train test proportion or because of the representativeness of the elements in each uh, set. But uh, happily, we have a more systematic way of evaluating the generalization performance, and that's through a cross validation which consists of repeating the split uh, such that the training and testing sets are different for each evaluation. The default strategy in scikit-learn is a k-fold cross-validation where k stands for the number of splits of the dataset. Here k equals to 5 and we are setting shuffle equal to false uh, meaning that in each fold you will iterate uh, in order the different subsets uh, that will be used for testing and in each set you can compute a different accuracy meaning that at the end you will have five different scores and that vary within a certain range and the, the, the variability of the scores measured on these splits um, gives us a good hint of the uncertainty of our estimate of the expected generalization performance uh, we, we had an infinite uh, test set. But for the sake of simplicity, we choose to summarize the cross-validation um, scores by their mean and their standard deviation across the different splits. But keep in mind that a proper quantification of the uncertainty of that estimate derived from cross-validation is still an open area of research. But let's go on. What happens if we set a shuffle equals to true? Uh, in this case, it will be like um, equivalent to shuffling a deck of cards before splitting it into five equally, side, uh, equally sized sets and uh, iterating across them and evaluating each time for the different test set. Um, it's important to notice that uh, you will have different sets of data for every different fold. But uh, that's one of the many techniques that can be used for cross-validation. Another technique that is provided by scikit-learn is the shuffle split, where the number of splits no longer determines the size of, a, of the train and test sets. 
Uh, in the deck of cards analogy, this is equivalent to shuffling the deck, drawing 20% of the, of the cards and use them for testing and then putting them back to the deck, reshuffling and drawing a new set containing 20% of the cards for testing and so on. Uh, notice that you can do this uh, as many times as you want, so you can explicitly uh, set the number of faults or the number of repetitions that you are going to do that, and that knows long that is independent of the test size. Um, but keep in mind that the more splits you make, the most likely is that you will draw repeated cards. Uh, but this is not really a problem for big data sets. For instance, here I want you to uh, pick to pay attention to the 7 and 0 here that are highlighted because this is uh, they are in the fold 1 but they are repeated actually in the fold number 2. So this is something that may happen and just keep in mind that uh, this uh, may also affect the reproductivity the uh, representativity of the of the testing set. Well, that's uh, good. So let's go to the take home messages and remember full data should not be used for scoring a model because it will not provide any uh, details on how the model will perform on new unseen data. If you want to estimate the generalization performance, then you need a trained test split. But if you additionally want to evaluate the variability of this estimate, uh, then you need to use cross-validation. Well, that's it uh, for the moment. Thank you for watching and see you next time.